everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to stamp using bleach. So it's something I never ever thought was, well, I, yeah, I just, it's something that never crossed my mind. But I caught a tiny bit of France Martin, she'd done a live um, recently, and I saw in the comments it had said, I've never thought about using bleach before. So I went back up again, and there she was stamping with bleach. And I just thought, wow, this is amazing. So I went onto YouTube and I put stamping with bleach and there's tons of tutorials. The oldest one I've seen um, is by Gina Kay. So that was the one I went to because I figured if Gina Kay can do it and she says it's okay to do, then I'll, I'll go with that, I'll believe it. So I watched her tutorial and it is, it's just stamping with bleach. So I'm gonna just go through a few do's and don'ts and kind of safety measures for my own peace of mind. Um, first of all, this is an adult only crafting. So if any of you are young children watching, because I know some of the, the younger people do watch my tutorials, or a minor, I don't wanna sound patronizing, but do not do this. And if you've never used bleach before, please do it with somebody else. Wear protective clothing, wear gloves, it's a chemical and it will burn your skin if you do not wash it off and um, yeah it's just not very nice and the smell can be overpowering as well. Make sure you've got your window open, make sure you've got um, a fan on so I've had my air conditioning on and my window open um, and you don't want to do it for a long amount of time okay so um, yeah just take those kind of things into account. Wear your old clothes, don't wear your vest, obviously in case anything does splash anywhere. It shouldn't, but just be careful. Make sure you've got a good, um, I've got a self-healing mat here. Use a glass mat, um, but don't do it directly onto your table. You need to make sure you've got something between your table and your what you're working with, just so it doesn't obviously damage um, any of your nice wooden tables, for example. Um, also, when you're using the bleach, you want to use a thin bleach. So don't use the thick, gloopy bleaches, which I know are very, very common in the UK. Um, and Mum, I know you're going to love this tutorial because she'll probably go and clean afterwards with the rag that she uses. So she's the bleach queen, we call her. So anyway, um, so I'm going to get to that bit in a minute. But first of all, I just want to show you the effects that you get. Now, everybody's will be different. Every card is different that people use. Um, the time that you leave it for it will carry on developing so the something you stamped on one day when you go back to it in the next morning it could be very very different again um, if you dry it with a heat tool you'll get a different effect to if you let it dry naturally there's so many different things so do play around with it because I've had a real you know I've enjoyed doing this and you'll see that in the tutorial a couple of things I've made so I've made a little gift bag here this was just me stamping onto some black card and you can see the different kind of um, effects that you, you get there. Now I use the heat tool and you can see where it's gone really, really almost much, much lighter there. That's because I dried it with a heat tool. I imagine if that was left, then it would be more consistent. I like um, dropped some droplets of bleach on it as well. Um, but yeah, I just done that little fold flat gift bag there with some little die cuts and a little note there. So that was just something I'd done. Then I've got these, these Nuvo drops are still drying, but I've done this background here. So this was on orange card, that's stamped in bleach. These do not smell either. So if you're worried and thinking, oh, I don't wanna give someone a card with bleach on it. Obviously don't give it to them maybe like half an hour after you've done it, but it doesn't smell. I can't smell any bleach at all. Um, so I've done that little thank you card. Once those Nuvo drops, they're dry clear, but that looks really quite nice. Um, I talk you through that in a minute, but also the stamp you choose, you want something that's quite a block um, stamp. You don't want something that's really detailed because the detail will just get lost. Um, so again, just play around. Also with the stamp, you want to use a rubber stamp and not a photopolymer. That's not to say you can't use photopolymer and some people have said they would, but the problem is you're not sh when people aren't sure on the longevity of the photopolymer once the bleach has gone in if it's seeped any further into it even though you rinse them straight after eventually it just may end up just completely making them turn to mush and break apart basically whereas the rubber um, ones they are so durable and the rubber I mean rubber's used in our day-to-day -day, you know um, 
uh, chairs and all sorts of things that we, we have around the house and they go through a lot of tension and wear um, and we clean them with chemicals and all sorts of stuff so the rubber is, is okay. You do just need to make sure you rinse it straight away. Um, that's another card I've done there so you can see this has almost got like a blue yet yeah, that was stamped on this green so again very very different. This one I stamped a sentiment so this is stamped in bleach with much love and thanks and then I stamped these two. You can see that one there has gone a bit more um, it's kind of like bled into each other but it still looks nice and then I've just finished with some dried flowers on that one and then that's the same stamp again there. Now I have got other stamps but I was just, this is me testing it, this is me playing around so I'm certainly going to be trying it some more. I haven't finished this card but it was just to show you there how good that looks. So you want a block image, I would say something that's not got a lot of detail in it. Okay so I think I've gone through all the safety measures and um, yeah let me show you what I've done. Okay, so I've got a Tupperware container here with a microfiber cloth, which already does have it on there because I have been playing. But basically I've just folded up the microfiber cloth just so I can lift a little bit up here. You can see how it's all folded there, just to create like an ink pad. Um, and then you just want to saturate the bleach over the microfiber cloth or the kitchen roll. If you're using kitchen roll, I'd maybe suggest about six sheets folded up to a similar kind of size like this, just so you've got quite a pad okay and then you just want to cover and I do top this up as I go okay I found when it's at its most really wet and saturated that's when I get the best effect so make sure I've got my window open so apologies if it is a bit loud and I've got the air conditioning on as well because I don't want these fumes I don't want to be inhaling it constantly I've got my heat gun here just to speed up the process if you need to just to show you different ways and I've got wet wipes to quickly wipe my stamps just to get off the initial bleach and then I will rinse them and clean them afterwards so I'm just going to pop that to one side and I'm going to bring in some dark cards so I've got some dark navy here I find that you get the best result from darker cardstock, however there are some lovely effects that the lighter cardstock gives you as well. So play around, it's really really fun and I do enjoy, have enjoyed doing this. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm just going to bring in this stamp here. So you want a stamp that's quite a, um, what's the word, bold, uh, surfaced image, a wide surface image with not too much detail you've got too much detail what will happen is it, the bleach will just keep bleeding and you'll lose all that detail whereas if you've got a block image that's the word I was looking for then they, these come out this has been coming out really well so basically I'm just gonna pop it in my pad and just ink it up that's what you're doing just imagine it is an ink pad and what you want to make sure you're doing is not pushing the um, the, the stamp into the bleach so that it's going over your rubber and into your actual foam because that's obviously where it's glued and the bleach could obviously that's the, the worst thing that will happen so it's all linked up and I'm just going to come down here and some results are instant and the colour really is unusual so that one's going to take a bit while you can see it's starting so mine are pretty saturated but like I said I find with a with a image like this you get a really good effect and everyone is different every cardstock is different um, just bleach different bleaches believe it or not as well you know some of the things that I've researched you and from the way it looks now you could come into it tomorrow morning and it look completely different so yeah it's um, it's pretty pretty cool so I'm just going to fill this piece here because I can use this then to make a nice card. I'm overlapping as well because I've got my self-healing mat there so I've got a safe surface. You can see how much it's changed from the bottom one there which they've now gone actually quite brown. Now they may well stay like that but like I said a lot of them do change significantly and then that one. Um, there we go, I think that's about right. So now I'm going to just wipe off the excess with my cloth and I'm going to go and rinse this now under the sink. Okay, so that's now all completely cleaned off, all right. Um, what I'm going to do now is use the heat tool on it just to heat set it. I'm just going to rub away some of the bleach. I am giving my uh, mat a good clean though. So, <laughs> and then afterwards with this I'll go and give the bathroom a clean. 
<laughs> okay so just grab your heat gun and you can see where it needs to dry because it will obviously get quite light in the see where it's darker in the middle there and then when I've just applied the heat so you don't need the heat tool you can just let it dry naturally I'm just doing it for the video just to see if it is going to change even more I think that's it for the minute but that's not to say that it's going to develop more overnight but how cool is that that was a plain piece of uh, navy cardstock now completely transformed so let's try this pink cardstock here and i'm going to use a different um, stamp so let's try this one i don't want that big block let's take this one off and use that one there okay again Bring it up, put one right in the middle there. I like to hold it for a couple of seconds and already I can see. So again, this is a block image and they're the best ones for this. It's unusual because it's bringing out the detail in the... I've used this on another piece of cardstock which I'll show you in a minute and it was completely different. Whereas this one has it has still shown the detail when I bring it up closer to the camera. And you'll know when you need to apply more bleach to your um, kitchen roll or your cloth because your images will start to become a bit... See there, they've got some gaps in them. See actually now this is probably too full, although it's still, it is still a nice effect because as it's developing more and more it's now losing that detail. Can you see it's just starting to turn into a bit of a blob? But it's a nice shaped blob. So I'll just finish down here. So that's why it's worth just playing around with the stamps because everyone is going to give you a different effect. So again, take the excess off and then I'm going to go in and rinse that. Okay, so if I just bring that up there, you can see. It still does look nice. It's this, you know, it's it's just such a cool effect. So that's that one. And then I want to try on some red. Um, let's try on this one here. And I'm going to use this stamp here. So again, I'm just going to pop a bit more bleach. Like I said before, make sure it's liquid bleach, not thick bleach. It has to be a liquid bleach. And again, the ink that up. So this hasn't gone white like the other ones, so this might be more of a faded look. See, now it's starting to turn. Can you see the edges there? I think my cloth's a bit too wet now, so it's just finding that balance each time. Some of them are a bit too splodgy. I think I work from the edge there a bit more. So I'd say this on the red is a bit more subtle. Again, I'm just going to go and get that dried off. Okay, I've just put my heat tool on it a bit, but you can see there the different stages of it developing. And again, very, very different look. So it's a lot more ready orange. That one's just gone really cream, really bright. This one is changing again, so it was quite brown, but now it's going quite an orangey colour. So I'm sure that's going to change up again. And then some other ones that I've done. So that flower one here, so you can see it was quite a splodgy. But look how it's come out on the craft card. All it looks like is that it's just a wet, it looks almost like it's got Versa um, mark on it. Like the, um, you know, the watermark. That's what it looks like and I really really like that it just looks like a patterned craft card so I'm really pleased with that one that's there the turquoise you can see again how that looks the orange is nice because it stayed orange so against the the orange card it yeah I like the way that that's worked and this one was really unusual got lots of different it actually came out really blue at the beginning it's a real vibrant blue. You can kind of see some of the blue colours there. And then slowly it's changed. But again, like I said, these are all still developing because it's, it's that chemical. So I want to create a little scene and I really like the purple. So let me bring this one in. And I used a sentiment on this one. And I love how that sentiment's come out. 
Um, wasn't so keen on these particular stamps, but I'm going to do these, um, this wording here, and then I'm going to combine some of these stamps, but I'm going to do it on the lilac card here. So let's get that all ready. Okay, I've just inked that up. I'm going to come up a bit here, because I want to put ribbon along the bottom. And this is to fit on a 5 by 7 card base. So let's see how that develops. I'll just bring that up there. You can slowly, it should start to reveal in front of you. Just take that off there. I don't want to leave that sitting. You see more and more it's coming through. Let me just use my heat gun. There we go. With much love and thanks, and I really, yeah, I really like that. So I'm just going to rinse that quickly. Okay, so then I'm going to use this one again, and just ink that one up. Again, don't want too much on. Like I said, I've saturated mine. I'm going to try and do some kind of. I'm going to do a couple because I intend to pop some die cuts over the front of this. So maybe just do the two like so. Again, just going to rinse this one. Okay, I've just been practicing with the sentiment and what I find is if you um, stamp off from it as well, it, it really does work. So that was the initial stamp, then I stamped it off again there and it didn't come out very well and then this one was the initial one and now this one just developing seems to come through quite nicely although I really like the first one that I done there but again if you just stamp and then stamp and you can start to see now all the different stages of it developing I'm just going to bring in that one again look how much it's changing again it's still it's still lifting but it's so gradual and it's really nicely blended again it's just and these I might fussy cut and do some cool cards with um, again that one's not changing too much I think I might just stamp on this side of this one so it doesn't bleed through I just want you to see just how vibrant the blue comes out initially so if I just ink that up ready it's instant look at that and then you can see it straight away starts to change and you, you get the um, the other colours starting to come through because when it first done that I thought wow I love that colour and I wanted it to stay and I don't not like that effect at all I think it's great but the blue against that green looked really good but you can see if I just speed it up a minute See now it's dried, you've got bits of white in the middle there, still a bit damp in the middle. Still bits of that blue, but yeah, that's what that one will look like. But I want to try the sentiment stamp on this craft card. So let's ink that one up. Probably put too much on there actually. Let's do that one there. And then I'm going to stamp off and stamp it. Because all this does is just stay that deep brown colour. It doesn't change colour at all. It doesn't go white or orange. Nothing. I'll just show you there. What kind of happens with a craft card is it disappears and then comes back in the, in the dark brown. So you stamp it and it's like this. Then it disappears a bit. Can you see this here? It's currently disappearing. And, but this one here is, is coming back again. And you can, you can make it out there with much love and thanks. So yeah, again, I really like it. I just like playing around. I'm grabbing my scraps of card. I'm grabbing all different um, white core card, um, color core card, black. Let me try some black. Uh, so I think the black's gonna go orange. That's what I think, but whether it will or not. So each time I'm just stamping and then stamping off again. Yeah, I was right. It's kind of starting to go an orange colour. Do you know what? This would look really cool for Halloween cards. So I'm going to again just use my heat gum. Just speed this up a little bit. Okay, so I've just quickly dried that. And look at that cool effect. Look at all the different tones. Now, this will probably change again. One thing I would say is, is do the paper one day and then make the cards the next. Don't do it all in one day because you could use your normal you know inks to stamp other parts and stuff and think it all matches at that moment and then the next day it could change so but i think that's a really cool effect for autumnal cards for halloween cards 
Really like that, that's really fun. Just want to show you, I've just done it on another piece of black card. This is a piece of A3 that I've got. And look at the completely different, I've done some splot splotches as well of, um, of bleach. Be careful when you do that, don't flick it um, over yourself. But yeah, it's more of a grey kind of finish. So again, I really like them. And they're called a fussy cut because they're quite simple images to kind of cut around. Um, but yeah, so it just shows from one piece of black to another the difference that you get there. It's really quite different. This is my favourite still though. So let's try one more and then I'm going to probably stop there and just make cards. So I'm going to use this one and this is this really deep um, purple colour. I've just stamped that off three times there so just remember everybody's card will be different so if you've got a deep purple don't expect it to be the same as what I'm doing now yours might be a white core card um, a colour core card a, you know the different weights of the card they're all gonna vary wow can you see that one there what that one's doing that one's really changing and also letting it dry naturally to heat drying will give different looks as well so can you just see what that's doing there it looks awful at the minute I don't like that at all let's just see well that's something completely new can you see it the whole image is stamped but it's only really started to discolor where there was obviously quite a lot of bleach so I imagine if I had a very thin amount of bleach you would just get kind of a silhouette but that if anything that's not worked on this card and this card here yeah this is a cheap card can you see this is just a um, oh I forget the name of this this card um, it's just your colour dyed on the fronts um, can you just see there so that's probably why so that one's that one's a scrap but that's fine because I haven't got a lot of that whatever the card is anyway that I really like this is I think this is this is a favorite of mine I just love that image that would look really nice in a gift bag so watch this space and see what I make which you'll see at the beginning of the tutorial anyway but I really really like that I love this this is going to become more of a, a better card once that's all finished and then I'm going to make lots and lots of cards from all this paper that one I love. I'm going to do something really nice with that one. So yeah, so hopefully I've shared a few tips there. Check out Gina K. Um, that's who I saw. And again, if Gina says it's okay to do and use your stamps, then I believe her. So <laughs> I think they're going to be okay. That one I love as well. I think that's really, really nice. That's going to make a nice autumnal, looks like the autumn leaves that are dropping. So yeah, there you go. So I hope you've enjoyed this um, stamping with bleach tutorial and um, go and give it a go take extra extra care wear an old top don't wear your best jeans and make sure you've got your surface well protected and um, yeah if you've enjoyed it please hit the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see more thanks for watching bye